A bill has been resubmitted to let local and state law enforcement know who has failed a NICS check and the feds want the local and state law enforcement groups to prosecute them. Uh, sit by and watch this episode of Guns and Gadgets. This one is uh, interesting. Today's video is brought to us by the USCCA. Guys, the U.S. Concealed Carry Association was founded to help responsibly armed Americans like you and me. They're committed to providing life-saving self-defense resources to help you and your family be safe. When you activate your membership, you'll automatically get life-saving self-defense education, industry-leading training, plus self-defense liability insurance. Don't wait until it's too late. Click the link down below in the description to learn more. That's uscca.com slash gng. And thank you to the USCCA for sponsoring this channel. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. I want to make everybody aware of a bill that was submitted last week while we were all focused on HR 8 and HR 1446. And this bill, while it's a resubmission, has some solid bipartisan support and I wanted you all to be aware of it. Uh, so the bill, uh, it's been submitted both in the Senate and the House, and as of the time I'm recording, the House, uh, the Library of Congress hasn't uh, printed them, so the numbers haven't been assigned. I do have a copy of the text that I will refer to, and I'll have a link to it down below. Uh, this is the Senate version, but they're going to be the same. The bill is called the Nix Denial Notification Act of 2021, and it has been submitted a couple times in the past and has had solid support. So first off, what does the bill do? The bill would uh, require the feds to notify state and local law enforcement when uh, a when somebody fails the NICS check, when they get denied a sale. Most of the time it's because they're a prohibited person and historically the feds have uh, prosecuted a very, very small percentage of the people who fail these uh, checks. And remember, it's an issue because lying on the 4473 is a crime uh, and those crimes like i said very very small percentages of those get prosecuted every single year and this bill looks to change that again it would require the feds to notify the local and state authorities within 24 hours so that the local and state police could uh, investigate and prosecute those people also the bill would require an annual report from the doj to uh, give them statistics of these prosecutions so they could hold federal of officials accountable, but I guarantee you they're going to put the onus on the state and say, oh, look how look how bad Rhode Island is at prosecuting all these people lying on their 4473s. And that is a point of this bill. Um, while on the surface, a lot of people will say, yes, yeah, if somebody's lying, and in, in, uh, if they know they're prohibited and they're lying in, or, in order to obtain a gun, then that's a bad thing. Um, and the issue I have with the bill is that it's the Fed's responsibility to be doing this, and because they uh, are inept at doing it and they haven't done it, done it they're not going to put that uh, that responsibility on the states to do it. And I guarantee you they're going to be pointing that finger, like I said. Um, but I'll, I'll give you a quick breakdown of uh, who is who submitted these bills and who's behind it. I'll give you a couple quick quotes, and then I will uh, let you have the rest of the day to yourself. So as of the recording of this, and it's changed a couple times in the last couple days uh, regarding who's supporting it. But in the Senate, it was submitted by Senator uh, Chris Coons, who is a Democrat out of Delaware. And it's important to note that he is uh, considered a very strong ally to the White House. He is uh, Biden's buddy, and uh, he is trying to do a solid for Joe Biden and his gun control efforts. Now, like I said, this has uh, bipartisan support. The co-sponsors, Immediately upon submitting the bill were Marco Rubio, Republican, Florida, uh, Tammy Duckworth, Democrat, Illinois, Susan Collins, Republican in Maine, Tom Carper, who's a Del uh, Delaware Democrat, he's also on the uh, the White House buddy-buddy list, uh, James Lankford, Republican, Oklahoma, Amy Klobuchar, who is, like, she needs to be the gun control queen now, her face is everywhere, uh, Democrat out of Minnesota, Pat Toomey, Republican, Pennsylvania, Joe Manchin, the Democrat from West Virginia. Also, again, I said it's changed a couple of times, uh, Chuck Grassley, who was a Republican from Iowa, and John Cornyn, Republican out of Texas, joined in as well. So it does have solid bipartisan support. 
and you'll see some of those names that I mentioned are always on all the gun control bills. So 10 co-sponsors immediately, and I have a feeling there will be more. Again, once it's in the system, I can track it a little easier. In the House, it was submitted by uh, Representative Mike Quigley, who's a Democrat out of Illinois. Uh, and he had three people immediately co-sponsored in the House, and that's Mario Diaz-Ballart, a Republican out of Florida, uh, Brian Fitzpatrick, Republican out of Pennsylvania, and Eric Swalwell, the Democrat from California. Again, people's names who I've read are usually on gun control bills, including some of these Republicans. Um, so why is this bill being uh, pushed? What's the, the, the new gotta have this reason? Well, they're toting the fact that uh, 37 states utilize the FBI for either all or parts of their background checks when it comes to uh, guns, whether it's uh, the uh, permitting process or the purchase of the point of sale stuff. Uh, and 13 states do it on their own. Now, I know the f first question is which of the thir which 13 states do it on their own. Here's a map from uh, NICS. This is the NICS participation map, and the states in red are the ones that do their own. Uh, we'll start from the west and we'll go Hawaii, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Illinois, Tennessee, uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Florida. Those are the 13 that do their own deal and you can see the rest on the map if you needed to understand how the other ones operate. Uh, but they're going to put the onus on the local and state authorities which means they're going to be expecting prosecutions to increase. Now we saw HR 8 and HR 1446 get forced through the House. And to be honest, I expect this bill to get, well not the same fanfare, to get similar treatment and get pushed through as well. This isn't going to be one of those ones they change the rules to shove down the throats of Americans. Uh, but I believe this one will, will get solid consideration. Uh, mainly because some of the groups that are backing this, uh, and I'll have to look at my notes because there's, there's quite a few. Um, so this is being endorsed by the Fraternal Order of Police, the Major Cities Chief, uh, Chiefs Association, uh, the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, the National District Attorneys Association, the National Domestic Violence Hotline, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, Every Town for Gun Safety, and Giffords. Now I'll give you some quick quotes from some of the senators uh, who have backed this and then again I'll have the link down below to the verbiage to the bill itself. And this is from Senator Coons who submitted it. He said, we have seen too many tragic instances where an individual who should not have been able to obtain a gun used a firearm to commit horrible acts of violence. I'm going to interject real quick that Criminals will get guns no matter how many laws they pass. For, I mean, we have tens of thousands of laws on the books now. Uh, he continued, Gun violence continues to plague our communities in Delaware and across the country. And the Nix Denial Notification Act is one common sense step in the effort to prevent these terrible crimes. Ensuring that federal and state law enforcement work together to stop those who are prohibited from buying a gun from getting one will help make our neighborhoods safer. This is exactly the sort of bipartisan step Congress should be able to support. Senator Cornyn from Texas chimed in as well. He said, after the tragic shooting in Sutherland Springs, Texas, I worked across the aisle to pass the Fix Nix Act, a critical piece of legislation to help close the gaps in the criminal background check system, but there is still work to be done. This legislation would ensure that when a prohibited person attempts to purchase a firearm, state and local law enforcement are alerted to further protect our communities. Marco Rubio chimed in from Florida, Our nation has experienced far too many tragedies as a result of multi-systemic failures of communication. The Nix Denial Notification Act would help ensure that federal and state authorities are successfully communicating with one another when it comes to dangerous individuals' prohibited attempts to acquire firearms. This would be a strong step forward in preventing future tragedies. I urge my colleagues to immediately support this bipartisan legislation so that the president can swiftly sign it into law. And the last one is from Senator Joe Manchin, West Virginia, the same senator that uh, is going to be uh, very important regarding the filibuster, which is going to be key in fighting off gun control going forward, oddly enough. Uh, he said, we must take action to ensure Americans prohibited from purchasing firearms cannot skirt the law while still protecting the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding gun owners like the vast majority of West Virginians. 
This legislation will help federal and state law enforcement work together to share information on background check denials to keep guns out of the hands of criminals. I'm proud to work with my bipartisan colleagues on this common sense legislation that will keep communities safe and urge our colleagues on both sides of the aisle to join us in protecting Americans from preventable gun violence while maintaining our Second Amendment rights. So you heard it from a couple different senators. Uh, the key to take out of that is that the feds and the states, they want the feds and the states to work together. And on the law enforcement side, they don't. They don't work together well. The feds, everything is a secret to them. And uh, they, don't, they never let the secrets out because if, if state and local law enforcement know the secrets, then who needs the federal law enforcement? That's kind of like the, uh, the joke in the law enforcement community. But uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, is it something that you, as a gun owner, are you okay with them going after people who are lying on background checks, who are uh, prohibited people and committing felonies by lying on the 4473? Uh, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts down below. Again, this is a crime that historically is prosecuted in very, very small percentages uh, and uh, looks like they're trying to change that. So I'll keep my eye on this. Again, once it is uh, updated in the system, I'll update the link down below. But the link down below is the rough draft that was submitted uh, to the Senate, uh, but it's going to say the exact same thing. So uh, take a peek at that. Let me know what you think. Check out the USCCA, guys and gals. It's what I use for my family to keep us safe. God forbid we have to make a decision that keeps us safe. Uh, so check them out, uscca.com slash gng. And also consider, please, Consider subscribing to this channel. This is where you'll find Second Amendment news, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, no matter where it happens. And uh, until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon. Please like and subscribe and share. It all helps. And leave a comment down below, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.